we take the stairs to the nun's wing. Turn right to the community room. Let us take a few seconds to observe this room which serves as a place for celebrations, meetings, and other gatherings for the nuns. Let's turn to the left corner of the room, closest to us. Under this window, you can see a chest, called a dead chest. We find these in different places in the monastery. These chests were made for both sitting and storage. Fitting perfectly under the window, it was an ideal way to make good use of every inch of space. Let's move slightly to the right. We are in front of the painting representing Madeleine de la Peltrie, a widow and rich heiress Madame de la Peltrie sailed to New France in 1639 with the first Ursulines. She was their benefactor and dedicated her life to good works. Take a few steps to the right. We now observe the portrait of Mary of the Incarnation. It was painted after her death. This is the last remembrance of the face of our holy foundress. It was painted by Hugues Pommier, a known portrait painter at the time. Let's move to the right again. Between the two windows, we see the portrait of another of our foundresses. She also arrived in 1639 on the same boat as Mary of the Incarnation. On this boat, there were three Ursulines and Madame de la Peltrie. The four had, as mission, the founding of this monastery and the education of young girls. Do you know the name of the first three Ursulines of New France? Mary of the Incarnation, Cécile of the Holy Cross, and the one represented here, Marie de Saint-Joseph de la Troche called Mother Saint Joseph. Let's return to the back of the room, in the right corner furthest from us. The first picture we see on the right wall is of Father Lemoine. He was the chaplain of the community as early as 1854. In 1888, he collaborated in writing the first history book on the Ursulines of New France. Let's move along the wall at the right. This time, between the two windows, there is no table but a clock. At the time, only a few families and religious communities had one. They mostly use hourglasses, bells, and sundials to mark time and respect their schedules. On the right, again, we go to the next portrait. The man here is Father Maguire. He was the chaplain of the Ursuline in 1832 and helped to restore the finances of the monastery after a difficult period. He reformed the rules of the cloister and, after a trip abroad, took inspiration from the best schools to add disciplines such as music to the curriculum of the Ursuline School. We continue along the wall. This portrait is that of Monseigneur Plessy. Very early in his career, Joseph Octave Plessy understood the importance of quality education. An admirer of the English method of education, he encouraged the Ursulines to teach new subjects. We make a quarter turn to the right. In the corner, at the base of the wall, we see an iron container and a sink. Since there was no running water at the time, it was convenient to have water nearby. Let's go back a little and make a quarter turn right to observe the room one last time before returning to the exit. 